Hey everyone, welcome to the Blue Turf Nation Twitter to Turf podcast. My name is Heath, I'm bringing you guys the first podcast for Blue Turf Nation in what I believe is like five, six years. So, really excited about that. Really wanted to get, you know, going on the podcast scene, get Blue Turf Nation out there, give you guys some content to listen to. Hopefully you enjoy us. Hopefully you guys, you know, enjoy the personalities of the Blue Turf Nation. Before I jump into it too much, I wanted to introduce myself and the website and just let everybody know kind of who we are, what we've been about, and, you know, what we're going to be bringing you hopefully over time as we continue to grow our, our, our website and our podcasting. So, First, Blue Turf Nation. What is it? Who are we? We're a fan site. We're here just to give you guys an opportunity to have some fans give their opinions on what we're seeing from the diehard perspective. Not the media perspective that's supposed to be impartial, not the news you know, perspective where people are trying to analyze things, but from the diehard fan who goes to the games, graduated from the school, you know, fell in love with the program after the Fiesta Bowl, whatever it is, that's what we're here for. You know, we have a bunch of different great people who are on this website who have been doing uh, blogging for for a very long time. Some have podcasting experience, some have uh, video experience, some have, you know, just great senses of humor or, you know, a ton of knowledge when it comes to even football. You know, we have a a football coach on our on our group, Um, Danny, you know, he coaches youth football. We also have, you know, former recruiting analysts who weigh in all the time. So. You know, it's just a, it's a really cool kind of joining of fans who have a lot of different experiences and stuff like that. Our website started back in uh, 2008. It started as actually a podcast, which is one of the reasons I'm, I'm so excited about getting podcasting back to the website. Um, it was started by a man named Cliff Marks. He, he and his friends both, uh, I believe, had radio experience and they wanted to bring something to the internet that was different, something that could give fans an opportunity to be heard. And they started their first po- uh, podcast in 2008 called uh, Blue Turf Radio, and then it kind of just grew. It started to turn into a, an opportunity to blog about it, and um, the website started to have a lot of success in 2010. Uh, it was featured on um, ESPN Sports Nation as like the Boise State's best fan blog. Um, later in 2011, 2010 time, you know, uh, Blue Turf Nation got invited to go to New York City to unveil the new Pro Combat uniforms, and then in 2012. Um, Cliff recruited Derek and I to come and start writing for the website. And at that same time, he was transitioning into a new phase in his life where he wanted to start you know, a photography business. He was really passionate about photography. And he offered us the opportunity to uh, join, uh, basically take over the website, to, to, to run everything while he stepped down and, and moved into some new things. So Derek and I jumped on that opportunity. We were super excited to do it. We brought in a lot of really cool people. Um, people who we've been super impressed with and, and love to see them weigh in on, on different subjects and things like that. Tammy, uh, she's our, our social media kind of person. A lot of people follow her and uh, have, have learned to find her personality rather uh, infectious. Uh, she was on Caves and Prater with, with JP and Derek when uh, Prater was out. And we've, you know, we've grown since then and we've had tons of writers come through, some who've moved on to bigger websites, who've gotten into recruiting analysis, some who've been featured in newspapers, some who stay around and just enjoy what we're doing and just enjoy kind of the, the aspect of just interacting with fans and giving their opinion. So it's been, a, it's been a fun transition. It's been a fun growth for our website. It's been something that you know, we're proud of and, and we hope that people enjoy. I think our, our niche is really, you know, we... We do a good job on social media, Twitter specifically. We've we've all been pretty active on there for years, so I think most people who are going to be listening to this are going to follow through through social media. And we just plan to kind of grow this. We plan to grow the podcast out, make sure that we have different things. We're going to start doing hopefully some group podcasting, where all of us will be featured on it at the same time, kind of giving you a roundtable perspective, and then just maybe other mini shows and things like this. This show specifically, I kind of had the idea to take Twitter and the conversations we're having on Twitter and bring it to to you know a podcast area where I can talk about it. But before I do that, I wanted to also give, you know, a little insight into me as a fan. Let you guys know who I am, what I've, you know, how I got so into the program. And so for me, it started uh, in 4th grade. You know, I moved here from Oregon. My family had moved, lived in Oregon and Canada. My father is Canadian. We uh Spent most of our time though in Oregon before before I moved here. I was actually born in Hermiston, Oregon, where Jared Zabransky played high school football, 
And when I got here, you know, I, I like many community members, kind of just fell into the Boise State, you know, crowd. It was, uh, my dad started taking us to the humanitarian bowls, the Iowa State game, the Louisville game. We were there for both of those. Some some regular season games in between, and those were just huge memories for me. And then as a basketball player growing up, Roberto Burgesson was a huge influence to me. And I went to a youth camp, and Roberto Burgesson was one of the the coaches there at Boise State. And I think that kind of hooked me in. And, and then going to Roberto Burgesson's senior night, seeing a sold out Taco Bell arena, it just became this is what I want to be. I want to be a Boise State athlete or a Boise State student. And as I grew up, you know, I, I stayed into it and I stayed wanting to go to Boise State and I ended up getting into, you know, Bronco Country in high school and from there I actually got really interested in making highlight videos. Um, I can't remember who did it at the time for the, on the website, but I got interested in it. I wanted to figure it out for myself and I did. I started teaching myself and sure enough by the time I was transitioning into college at Boise State, they contacted me and gave me the opportunity to intern during Callumore's freshman year to come in and make highlight videos uh, that you would see before pregame. Um, they put them on the website, just little things to get people hyped up and, and highlight packages and things like that. But it gave me the opportunity to be inside the football facility, see some of the inner workings, get some fun stories from that, and then get sideline passes and, and things of that nature. And, you know, my family is a big Boise State family in terms of, you know, they always are interested in the games. Uh, my little sister lives in Florida. Uh, she still, you know, dresses up her, her kids on game day. My middle sister, her whole, you know, goal in life was to become a mainline dancer as she was growing up, and she did that for three years. Uh, my my mom's a huge Boise State fan. My wife uh, graduated from Boise State. So big Boise State family. Traveled to a lot of games. I went to, you know, the Virginia Tech game, the Oregon game, TCU in San Diego, uh, Louisville and Memphis, you know, just – been kind of everywhere and just you know former season ticket holder and just love 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 everything broncos and that's why blue turf nation has been such a great fit for me and that kind of leads me into our topic for the day the topic for today is we've had this debate on twitter um kind of sparked by by probably one individual a few individuals but one specifically that i'll focus on a little bit but we have had this debate the pro harson crowd you know he's he's the guy for the for the program he was the right hire at the right time and then there's kind of the anti harson crowd, the in most extreme circumstances fire harson crowd. But I think everybody on both sides are big fans. I, I've always said that the people who are you know arguing on Twitter are never the ones that you have to worry about putting you know in the stadium and things like that. They're they're going to support the program. They just have different ways of going about it. But this all started about a year ago on Twitter. Uh, Tucker, who was actually a former writer of ours, he had made a comment, a tweet. That had said Boise State had the second best D1 coach in Idaho. And, you know, to his credit, he's kind of stuck with this point of view this entire time. And he was also, you know, he was insinuating that Idaho had a better coach, that, you know, them making a bowl game and stuff. He was more impressed, I think, by them growing their success to being a bowl eligible team than anything that Brian Harson had done inheriting what Chris Peterson had left behind. And,. Throughout this time, he's kind of maintained that stance, but after the, I believe it was the Washington State game, you know, it really became a point of, of debate. And so I got asked a lot, you know, where I stand on that topic. And for me, I guess I'm not always pro or, or against the, the Harson group. I think I am very much just in the prove it group. I, I have a lot of things that I think most fans should be concerned about. I think when you look at the success that this program's had, there's question marks. Um, my my expectations for the program have always been the same over the years. You know, I want to protect home field, which certainly doesn't mean going, you know, winning like 100 games and losing four or whatever. You know, for me, it's it's winning the games that you're supposed to at home, which would not be losing to University of Virginia. It would not be New Mexico. It wouldn't be Air Force. You know, if a, if an Oklahoma State comes in here next year highly ranked, which is very likely, I, I think we'd all be, you know, understanding if that game turned out to be a loss. But it's losing to teams that you're favored in those games and at home, that's tough for me as, as a fan. Because I think we have few traditions at Boise State. One of them is winning at home. And so for me, that's always been one big expectation. The other one has always been conference titles. 
And I'm sure we'll talk about it in other podcasts about how we feel about New Year's Six Bowls and stuff like that. But for me, conference titles are so important just for the, the, the stature of the program just to maintain itself as we go into this crazy world that we, we've seen what conference realignment can do in expansion. I just think that constantly or consistently being the best team of the mid-major conferences is super important in that. And so for me, conference titles are very, very important. And I've always had that as a high level of, of importance for me as a fan. So as I sat here and I thought about it and I discussed it with myself and I really started to think about what this program is, I realized that the reason I kind of go towards the Tucker side, and I think that a guy like Tucker himself uh, and even Derek, who who I was, you know, I was speaking about earlier with the website that we run here, after the UVA game, they, they start to move towards that fire Harson or maybe Harson's not the right guy for the job or question that stability in that position is because you realize that it's not even about winning conference titles. It's about winning the division. It's about winning those games that we're supposed to. It's about what does our team look like? Can you argue that our team is what you thought it would be when Harson was hired? When Harson was hired, how many people had Boise State being a defensive juggernaut at this point in the season, but looking absolutely anemic on offense. I mean, we're talking Brett Rippon, a two-time Mountain West player, you know, quarterback, first-team quarterback, doesn't look like he belongs on the field, which is a completely different thing. And, I, and I'll talk about that in the questions and answers phase. But our quarterback situation is confusing. Our wide receiver situation is scary. I think you have kind of a one-guy show right now. Tight end looks good with Jake Rowe, but again, we're not dynamic. Alexander Madison does his job the last couple games, but before that, the offensive line in the running game was probably, I mean, being completely honest, probably the worst I've seen as a Boise State fan ever. And so when you put all those things together, mixed with questionable timeouts and weird game management situations and losing at home as double-digit favorites, I think you mix all that stuff together and there's a, there's a crowd of people who certainly have a right to question whether or not they got the right guy at the right time. I think all of us want him to succeed. I think all of us are excited for Brian Harson as a Boise kid, a Boise guy growing up, to have him succeed. I don't think anybody's rooting actively against Brian Harson, but I think that they're questioning. And I find it very interesting, and I, and I understand you know, the pro Harson side. Uh, he's done a lot, and that San Diego State game is, is proof that you know, he he can do it, and he can get this team ready, and he can do things as a coach that make Boise State look exactly the way that I think most fans want. He's maintained the status quo of what Boise State is. Most fans, I think, when he first started, were extremely excited about what he was doing. You know, Andy Avalos is a Boise State guy. We're excited about that. You know, he brings in Sanford. That was extremely exciting. Keeping a Boise, you know, Lee Marks, you know, keeping that Boise pipeline invested in the coaching staff and creating that culture that we're all excited excited for that's the stuff that we've all been happy to see in in the past so he's done nothing wrong in those areas he's recruited statistically better than any coach we've ever had now it's just time to kind of put it all together and we're all waiting to see it we're all waiting for that prove it so i got asked uh by raja on 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 twitter and actually i should probably find these guys these these guys twitter handles while i'm at it so i can just give them out there for like the seven of you guys who probably listened to this for the first time, but if you don't follow them already. But I got asked, you know, what would it take for Harson to be your guy? And for me, it came back to those expectations. But I'll be completely honest. Even if you fell short of those expectations, say we don't win the Mountain West Conference this year, if I see the same team that I saw against San Diego State for the rest of the season, I think I'll be excited about that. Because Harson created something there where... You saw that chip on the shoulder. You saw that swagger. You saw that confidence. You saw that, you know, we're the best in the group of five. We're not afraid of anybody. Hitting guys. You know, talking a little a little trash. Having fun out there. I think that if that team shows up for the rest of the season, I'll completely be on that Harson's my guy thing. And I think all the Harson, you know, detractors will be. A guy like Tucker, you know, he got a lot of stuff after the uh, San Diego State game. But he's a huge fan. He, Like I said, he's written for us. He actually kept stats uh, for, for a local radio before he was doing all the other stuff. You know, he, was, he, he goes to the games. 
uh, he's he's a big time supporter of the program, and I think most people are. And so I think all of us are just kind of looking for the same. Where is this program going? But we just kind of go about it in different different ways. For me, that's that's kind of my stance on it. I know it's kind of on the fence. I don't think the pro Harson people are wrong. I don't think the anti you know Harson people are wrong. I don't even like to call them anti Harson. I just think the, the the questioners of Harson. Are, are wrong. I just think that everybody's kind of passionate about it. For me personally, I'm more on the prove it side with people like Tucker. I think that he's got a lot of really legitimate points. He's been watching this program for years. He knows exactly, I mean, just, and watching them in depthly because he was, like I said, he was keeping stats. So he knows what he's looking for. And I think everybody's just looking for Harson to prove it. Win a Mountain West title, I think everybody's going to be quiet. You know, you went out this season and obviously everybody owes him a ton of gratitude and doesn't he doesn't deserve to be questioned again but we got to see it we got to we got to feel it we got to be proved it so you know i'm rooting for harson i think all of us are rooting for harson uh, but that was a fun debate we've had on twitter this week it was really not even just this week it's been going on for months but i, I just thought that would be kind of the first topic i talk about i was excited to talk about it um being completely honest i've done this podcast like three times i'm just gonna let it ride this time so hopefully you guys are enjoying it i did find Tucker's uh, Twitter handle is at T B O T K I N one. So if you want to go and have an argument uh, about the Harrison stuff, I'm sure he'll completely uh, indulge you. Uh, and then obviously the Blue Turf Nation people, you can find them by following me or, or asking. But we got a lot of a lot of good stuff there. Um, I'll transition into kind of the next segment. I did a question and answers phase uh, on Twitter. I, I got a couple questions. The the big one is. You know about quarterbacks. How do I feel about the quarterback situation? Um, For me, I think there's no doubt. I don't even think, honestly, I don't even think there's a question. The way that you phrase it, you know, who's the best quarterback on the team? It's Brett Rippon. It's not. It's not even debatable. But I'm the type of guy who believes that quarterbacks are made more by their personnel and scheme, and their fit in that in that in that scheme and then with that personnel group than I am of talent. I I find it very rare that you're going to have a guy like Lamar Jackson who can just kind of do whatever he needs to do to make your team succeed. I think Brett Rippon is far and away the more, more gifted quarterback out of him and Montel Cozart. I think he's the guy. But unfortunately for him, I think Montel Cozart's become the fit. And I think Montel Cozart's become the right guy for this team, which for some might sound kind of weird. But I think if you were to put Brett Rippon, and I know this is going to hurt to hear, but I think if you put Brett Rippon in Washington State, He's breaking records. I think it fits his his skill set a lot better than what we're doing in Boise State right now. Getting rid of the football quickly, quick reads, quick passes. He's got incredible arm strength. He's actually a very accurate passer, but he makes questionable decisions. But I think those decisions have been questionable because of the fact of what's happened to him early in the season. We didn't protect him up on the front. You know, the line was shaky, and then you had the the secondary quarterback kind of getting a lot of love, and I think that kind of messed with his with his confidence. I said this is Brett Rippon's uh, junior year, much like Zabransky's, and I think he can still bounce back from it very, very well. I think his senior year, he might have an incredible year, but I think this year right now you're going to start to see them go to Montel Cozart perhaps a little bit more because we're seeing the team shift its uh, style of winning. I don't think this team's excited about trying to win with tons of offense. I think what they've realized is we've got an incredibly talented young defense that's very deep. We've got a capable running back who's showing everybody right now what he can do, an offensive line that's figuring it out. So I think what they've done is said, hey, let's not turn the ball over. Let's possess it for a long time, and then let's try to get you know good field position. And by doing that, Montel Cozart being able to run – and keep the defense honest and keep one of those defenders watching him as they hand it off to to Madison, I think he just kind of fits that right now. And I think as we go forward, we're going to see potentially more of him unless Brett can figure out, you know, what's been happening with him this season. If he can if he can go against Wyoming and get a good rhythm going and we can protect him and he kind of finds that, that thing that was made him, you know, who he was the se- past two seasons, I think we'll be fine. But... I've always said with Brett, it's kind of going back to that Air Force game. It's it's questionable. You just don't know what you're getting, and so it's finding that consistency and things like that. But right now, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards, I th- I'm starting to think they're going to start handing the, the ball to Montel a little bit more, and that's kind of where I, I, I stand on it. I just think that he's the right fit for for this team. I think he gives us the best shot to 
just kind of do what, what's being successful right now. It could change. Obviously, a ton's changed since a lot of the first couple games to uh, where we're at now. But that's where I that's where I feel we're headed right now. The other question I got on uh, Twitter was from everybody knows this guy. You know how to be on Twitter to know this guy. It's from the BSU pimp. He asked me, uh, baked potato or French fries? I, I mean, for me, it's not really a debate. If I'm if I'm being completely honest, if I mean, it's always going to be French fries. I, I just. I mean, it, obviously, it'll depend on who's making what. My wife makes an amazing baked potato now, but I just, if you put the two in front of me on a random day, I'm I'm probably always going to uh, pick French fries. Um, so I guess that's that's where I stand on that. You can follow the BSU Pimp on Twitter, by the way, at BSU Pimp. Um, and then the question I got um, for the quarterbacks, I'm not sure. I don't know if I can find his Twitter handle at the moment, but um, I'll get it next time. But, yeah, that's kind of where I stand on those questions. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's been kind of our first ever little podcast. It's a quick 20-minute podcast. I hope everybody likes it. Like I said, Derek, Tammy, myself, Ryan. Uh, I mean, I'm forgetting people, I'm sure, but we're, we're going to try to bring, bring group podcasts as a whole and, and give you guys more podcasting uh, content, give you guys stuff to listen to. Hopefully you find it slightly enjoyable. Hopefully you find our, our fan opinions acceptable. If not, you can come and debate us all you want. Hey, you might even hit us up with a message and we can invite you to maybe one of our podcasts. But it's been a it's been a fun, cool experience to get this going and hopefully you guys enjoy it for the long haul and I'll be trying to get you guys these weekly and once uh once we have another one up, uh, we'll let you guys know. Thanks for listening. <laughs>